Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Ray McGuff. Ray! Let's get a round of applause for everybody that's been up on stage so far. Give it up! Great comedians. I was going to say what a great looking crowd you are, but I've been told I don't have enough time, so fuck you. Yeah, thank you. Mom, are you out there? I didn't even think you could make it. Uh, listen, I recently purchased, before we get go, I purchased this jacket. I thought I looked like Wolverine. Got home, fat Kevin Bacon. <laughs> terrible, terrible purchase. But I'm wearing it because I fucking bought it. <laughs> oh man. And uh, you know, one more thing too. I, I, I'm living in Columbus, but I don't really know. Is this a bad neighborhood? Is it? I don't know. Like, because I got out of my car and I swear to God, the wind blew and I heard, you gotta get stabbed. I was like, shit. I looked around, it was just Farva. <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you what, uh, again, my name is Ray McGuff, I'm 37 years old, been doing stand-up for about you know, five or ten years all together, uh, and uh, recently had some medical problems myself, I know apparently all of us comedians have diabetes, oh, I know, right, it's because we're lazy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I went to a doctor, I, I woke up one morning, totally legs swollen, I thought I couldn't walk, get into the emergency room. They're like, oh my god, we gotta run all these tests. It was crazy. And then uh, I sat there for 12 hours, because uh, I'm single and nobody loves me, running through scenarios in my head by myself with nobody to talk to. I was like, do I have cancer? Do I have AIDS? Do I have cancerous AIDS? Which is the worst kind of AIDS. Really? I thought that one was going to kill. You guys don't fucking find cancerous AIDS? Uh, <laughs> well, it was frightening. The doctor came in and he said, listen, pal, it's not that big a deal. You're just super fat. You just have to get on a fucking diet, you know, and exercise. I've lost 60 pounds. I know you can't tell I'm still chubby as shit. But I'm getting there. Every morning I wake up and I go, you fat bastard. Get it together. Get going. So, that's what I do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, and, uh, you know, I mentioned being single is tough at this age. I'm sure it, it, in my 20s, I didn't think at 37, I'd still be, you know, alone and sad. Uh, don't feel too bad for me. I jerk off all the time. It's crazy. And unlike Misty, I pull my own hair. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I've tried, I've tried a few different things here and there. I uh, did a little online dating for a while. Um, I'm not very good, it's not very good at the bullshit part of online dating, like where you have to say, oh, I'm this person here, you know, and lie back and forth to each other. I swear to God, I had this girl once, she sent me a message, she's like, so what sex with you like? And I, I'm like, oh, well, I'll tell you. It's like the power tower at Cedar Point. It's a three hour wait for 30 seconds of sheer terror. And then I saw her little icon go, all I thought, I thought she was a keeper. Guess not. Uh, I was banging a girl in a wheelchair for a while, but she kept rolling away, so I just uh, You can laugh at that one, but cancer AIDS is too much work. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll tell you what, um, you know, I know there were a couple of people here that's talked about having kids. Everybody in my age bracket's having kids. Constantly. Like, I have to congratulate everyone every time I run into somebody at a Walmart. Oh, you're having a baby. Good. Well, how's come nobody congratulates me? You know? 37 years, not one instance of a child. Not one. I'll tell you, I've ruined a lot of bad spreads. Uh, lots of them. Just done. Okay. I've, I've ruined several. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's sad. The, the dating in general is, is ridiculous and sad. 
and uh, you know, so I don't want to hurt on it too much. But uh, guys, at the end of the day, you know, you're looking for somebody that wants to hold you, and, you know, love you. And that's all I. This one, so that's why I climb up on stage in front of strangers. Love me or don't. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, too, in the, uh, in the interim, I, sometimes I'll go into the lion's den. Are there any fans of the lion's den? Or porn shops in general? <laughs> the, the problem right now with uh, porn shops, they, they've got this weird scenario where every one of them wants to be like the next target. So you go in there and they want to give you like regular customer service. Like, I'm in a porn shop, motherfucker. I don't want to talk to you. I've already had to weave a fucking way around through truck drivers and other degenerate assholes. You know, I just want to get my stuff and get out. I don't need, I don't need to talk about it, you know what I mean? You get, you get in there and you're like looking at something, so it's like, oh, uh, hey, uh, can, we have these DVDs on sale. Listen, I don't want your ass blaster for DVDs on, for $19.99. I'm here for something specific. Or you get to the, uh, my favorite part, where you get to the cashier and he wants to have like a normal cashier talk with you, like, um, hey, how did you find everything? Did you find everything all right? Then how's everything with you? Are you kidding me? I'm in a porn shop at 2 a.m. buying a flashlight to fuck. My life's great. Couldn't be happy. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, you know? So, uh... At the end of the day, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I just try to do what I can when I can. Um, I was told I only had a, a shorter amount of time, so I kind of cut out some jokes. Uh, how much time do I have? About two minutes? Okay. Um, I'd like to tell you uh, how I got into stand-up comedy. I, I come from a very fam uh, family-oriented family, which is kind of weird. It's in there. But everybody in my family, they have a specific thing they're good at. My father is very funny. So I'd like to tell you the very first dirty joke my dad ever told me. Okay, can I do that for you tonight? Let's play. All right. There are two hillbilly brothers, Zeke and Henry Lee. All right? One day, Henry Lee decides he's going to go to the big city of Cincinnati and start a new life for himself. So he gets up, packs his stuff, and moves there. A few years later, he sends for his brother, Zeke, to come down and visit him. So they're walking through the city. Henry Lee's showing him all around. Zeke's looking around. And things are you know, a magical downtown city. I don't know if you've been to Cincinnati, it's not that magical. <laughs> but anyway, so they're walking down an alleyway, and a woman in the window, she goes, hey. And the hillbilly brother's like, oh my god, Henry Lee, that girl in the window up there, she's, she's weeping at me. What should I do? He goes, well, you dumb son of a bitch. Way back. So he gives her away. Next thing you know, she's blowing kisses at him. Blowing kisses in her direction. He goes, oh my God. She's blowing kisses at me. What should I do? He looks at me. He goes, well, you should blow kisses back, buddy. So he blows kisses back to her. And all of a sudden, she opens her top and shows her tits. He goes, holy oh, hell. She just showed me her tits. He goes, Brother, show her your nuts. So he looks her in the eye and goes, -ah 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 -ah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been Ray McGuff. You guys are great. Have a great day. Give it a little more time for Ray McGuff, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>